हेलो पीपल दिस इज सोनाली द मेलोटोमेटिक बुक वाम इफ यू बिन यू है वेलकम बैक एंड इफ यू एंड माई चैनल वेलकम टू द मेलोटोमेटिक बुक वाम फैमिली ऑल्सो वेलकम टू द रीडिंग ब्लॉग फॉर द मे ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर सब्सक्राइबर पिक विच इज Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. For those of you who don't know, subscriber picks are reading vlogs in which every month you choose a book for me from among four or five options, which I will read, vlog, and share my thoughts about with you. And the book that you chose as subscriber pick for May 2024 was Lessons in Chemistry. Okay, before we start this vlog, a little something about this book and about this. copy in particular is that this book this copy was uh, among the first books that i bought here in sydney when we moved in 2022 and i got it at a very reasonable price also i think i got it for 5 dollars at kmart and the excitement that i felt then on seeing that this book was available and at such a reasonable price too it sort of morphed into a fear that i won't enjoy this book that much and i know that the reviews for this book are mostly favorable but i don't know like you've seen me talk about a couple of books in the past few weeks which the world loves but i didn't so i'm like maybe i'm building it all up in my head and it will fall flat but then again maybe i will find a new favorite book and maybe i'll sing its praises who can tell now before i start the vlog and start reading the book here's what lessons in chemistry is all about here's the blurb chemist elizabeth zott is not your average woman in fact elizabeth zott would be the first to point out that there is no such thing but it's the early 1960s and her all male team at hastings research institute take a very unscientific view of equality except for one Calvin Evans, the lonely, brilliant Nobel Prize nominated grudge holder who falls in love with, of all things, her mind. True chemistry results. But like science, life is unpredictable, which is why a few years later Elizabeth Zott finds herself not only a single mother, but the reluctant star of America's most beloved cooking show, Supper at 6. Elizabeth's unusual approach to cooking, combined one tablespoon acetic acid with a pinch of sodium chloride, proves revolutionary. But as for following rules, not everyone is happy because as it turns out, Elizabeth Zott isn't just teaching women to cook she is daring them to change the status quo i mean there's a reason why i fell in love with the concept of this book okay so without any further ado let's dive right into this reading vlog and let's start reading the subscriber pick that you chose for me for the month of may 2024 which is lessons in chemistry by bonnie garmus So I finished the first couple of chapters. It's not a lot, just seven pages of it. And in these itself, I, I've seen so many points where I'm like, no, babe, it's not supposed to be like that. But the world is like that. What what can I do? Kind of thing. You know what I mean? Maybe I'm rambling at this point, but yeah. You right smack in the first page itself, I was attacked by a five-year-old, if you can believe it. A uh, Madeline, who is Elizabeth Zott's daughter, uh, is being described here, and here's what is being said about her. Most young children can't read, and if they can, it's mostly words like dog and go. But Madeline had been reading since age three, and now at age five, was already through most of Dickens. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm not going to take that as a personal attack, but okay, at age five, Dickens. Well, I love that for her, not so much for myself. And at the end of page seven, which is chapter two, chapter two, right? It's chapter two. <sighs> Elizabeth Zott is on TV. Is on Supper at Six, cooking and feeding the whole nation, and all a um, prominent reporter, a sexist mm, mm, reporter, can uh, think of naming her is Luscious Lizzie. again so i just got through three more pages before uh, it was 5 o'clock and our favorite quiz show started so i've been 
trying to watch that while reading this but it's not happening so i'm going to take a break a very early break from lessons in chemistry go watch this quiz show then there's another a game show then there's another quiz show then there's master chef australia then there's another show that we watch every week and yeah it's a thing hi hello i'm about 50 pages into lessons in chemistry and i'm really liking it so far and since i'm only about 50 pages in i don't have much else to add other than what i was speaking about in the previous clip but as you know we follow elizabeth zott her life with her daughter madeline uh, how she does a very specific kind of cooking show on tv that is absolutely groundbreaking but as is the way of this bs world men objectify her and belittle her talents the next chapter introduced us to calvin evans who elizabeth was in a relationship with and we watch it go from a meet hate to elizabeth moving in with calvin but that is not the crux of elizabeth's story i watched in horror as elizabeth is made fun of she's belittled and she is looked down upon because she is a woman the fact that she is a supremely intelligent and an extremely attractive woman scientist like doesn't even figure in the equation she is a woman she dared to become a scientist so people thought that she was fair game that they could take a dig at her anytime they wanted it was pure sexism and misogyny like no other term covers it it's 1952 right now in the story and society's misogyny is playing out in all its hellish, disgusting glory. There's the disgusting talk about how women lead men on, that they lure them in, that if they are successful, it is because they slept their way to the top. But then again, any constructive thing that they may have to say will is wrapped up in, oh, you are a woman, what would you know? And then the discussion of how a woman is expected to change her name after getting married. And I love the points that Zot makes. How she points out the hypocrisy that just for the sake of tradition, the women are supposed to be the ones to take their husband's names. But if you as much as suggest that a man takes a woman's name, his wife's name, it's apocalypse now. And all they'll have to say in response to that is, Hey, this is how it's always been done. So we are going to follow it. You have to take me. And just because it's always been done, it doesn't mean that it can't or shouldn't change. And you get so triggered by the mention of you changing your name to your wife's name. Don't you think that us women are attached to our own names, to our own identities? And before anyone goes, oh, women's maiden names are also not their own, it's their father's. Don't even go there. Anywho, oh, I, I'm just realizing that I, I did have quite a lot to say about the first 50 pages actually. But yes, I'm super excited to continue reading Lessons in Chemistry and to see, to find out what Elizabeth Zott gets up to. So I will come back and share with you my thoughts as and when I have them. Until then, bye. Hi, I have been reading this book and I am at a point where a shocker of a thing has happened. I was not expecting it and even my notes over there have like, what, what, what is going on? I did not see this coming and I did wonder what happened Okay, I'm going to pause at that because I don't want to give a spoiler. I just want to give my thoughts. I, I'm right now very whiplashed and I'm very shocked because of what has happened because I did not see that coming. Just a, a few pages before that, Elizabeth and Calvin are talking about how he should take the dog on a leash because now it's become the law. And uh, if the dog is not on a leash, he might get run over by a car. And now this happened and I'm like, what kind of basically i'm very upset at how it's going or at least just these two three pages where these last developments have happened and i'm like why would you do something like that but okay this explains what happens and it connects back to the first part of the story where we follow in 1961 we follow elizabeth zott living with her daughter Okay, now my mind is racing. 
and I don't know what to think but uh, there's also this thing where uh, Calvin and Elizabeth are living together now obviously he, he's even proposed to her and she said no and all of that has happened and we see Calvin's insecurities come out to the for her, his fears and what he does to alleviate those fears, what he does to protect Elizabeth. But then again, the things that he's doing, if you put them out in uh, in for all the world to see, the world being what the uh, it is, it will point a finger at Elizabeth, and that is something that Elizabeth doesn't want because she wants her to be able to say that I did this on my own and for Calvin to do these uh, things it annoyed me but I'm also like I see his uh, reasoning behind it and I'm like mm, I don't know what to think but I'm more on Elizabeth's size here because she, she told him not to interfere when he still did but these last developments man Okay, I'm going to move forward. I'm going to read forward. I just wanted to come here and uh, talk about this shocker and talk about how I feel about this shocker. And maybe I'll come back once I'm done like 150 pages or something. That makes sense, right? So see you there. Hey there. I'm now about 148 pages into lessons in chemistry and as much as i'm liking the story and the point that it makes i must say that i'm a tad bit confused about the writing i don't yet know what to think of it because it somehow oscillates between character perspectives in one sentence we are taken through elizabeth's point of view and what she thinks of people around her and of life in general and in the next we're thrown into the dog's point of view like it's disorienting but i won't say that it's something that's putting me off i'm okay with it just confused okay so now we are following elizabeth zott and her life as a scientist and a new mother in the wake of society's failure to be human like all mothers zott is struggling to handle a baby and her situation is even more dire because she doesn't have anyone to help her so at the point that we are in the story right now we are introduced to harriet sloan who i'm guessing will have a huge role to play in zott's life i mean i could be wrong but I some, it somehow feels like that, given the kinds of advice that she's given Zot in the few pages that she's been there. Before this, however, there was a point where I was boiling with so much rage that even though I'm tabbing and annotating this book, there are multiple pages where I haven't because I was scared that I would puncture the book in my anger. Because there are multiple instances of society as a whole being blatantly misogynistic, blaming Zot for getting knocked up, the men hating on her because she's assertive, the women hating on her because they've, they'd been conditioned, accusing Zot of coming on to a man because she wanted her work done. Again, accusing her of riding on the coattails of her boyfriend. It pissed me off so many times, I had to keep putting the book aside to collect myself. The writing, however, is easy to read and apart from the previous thing about shifts in perspectives that I mentioned, it flows quite easily and beautifully in a way that I'm really, really enjoying. Okay, so that's all I have for now. I'll see you once I have anything more to say. Until then,
Okay, so this one I have to, I have to, I have to record because this is so funny. I don't know if I'm the only one who finds this funny because I, I do a lot of dad jokes and by lot, I mean a lot. So Elizabeth Zott is talking to Harriet Sloan and they're talking about her five-year-old daughter. Although she was only almost four, Mad was already bigger than most five-year-olds and could read better than many sixth graders. But despite these physical and intellectual strides, just like her antisocial mother and grudge holding father, she had few friends. I'm worried it could be a gene mutation, Elizabeth confided to Harriet. Calvin and I could both be carriers. The I hate people gene, Harriet said, there is one. And then, shyness, corrected Elizabeth. Introversion. So guess what? I've enrolled her in kindergarten. Okay, all that is fine. Mad needs to be around children, you said so yourself, she said she says it to Harriet. It was true. Harriet had voiced that opinion at least a hundred times in the last few years. Madeline was a precocious child with extraordinary ver verbal and comprehension abilities, but Harriet wasn't convinced she was gaining in average areas. How to tie shoes, how to play with dolls. The other day, she suggested they make mud pies and Mad frowned. Then wrote 3.1415 with a stick in the dirt. Done, she'd said. That child is a fracking genius. Just like her mother, she is an absolute, absolute genius and I love her the more for it. Which five-year-old says 3.1415 when asked to, in the dirt, when asked to make mud pies? I'm just in awe of this kid, okay? There are multiple characters in this book who are sexist pigs and especially since in, this was set in the early 1950s, it started uh, in 1952, now we are in 1956, I think, and uh, it's still going on. And there is one particular character who I would like to punch the face off because they are, he's so, he's such a huge jerk. Like, I would, I have the choicest words to say to him, okay? Because he is such a, such an entitled prick. He thinks women exist for his pleasure, for lack of a better word. And he thinks women are supposed to listen to him, that, that the men are supposed to be doing the work and the women are supposed to be helping them by making coffee and etc. And Elizabeth is now here in his office and he has hired her again because he is in trouble and he wants to not be in trouble and when he asks when can i read your paper elizabeth said i have a few things left to focus on if i can be allowed to concentrate on just that without distraction for the next six weeks i should have something for you concentrate on just your work he said surprised that seems rather okay that next sentence i'm not going to say i'm sure you remember that's not how this department runs. We help one another here. We are, we are a team, like crew. And yet, when one of the team, when one of your crew was in dire trouble, what did you do? You fired her. And now conveniently you want her to work on your crap because you are in trouble. <laughs> She's been working and working and working without pay all these years because she is passionate about chemistry and this fellow this i just wish he gets what he deserves because i i don't usually say that a character needs to just be taken away if you know what i mean but this is one character who i loathe with everything inside me and who i hope that oh because he is just that kind of a character Look at this. Here, Donity said, handing her a huge stack of papers. Start by typing these. Also, we are low on coffee and talk to each of the fellas. See what kind of support they need. You need the support of my fist across the, 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 across their cheeks. Support, Elizabeth said. But I'm a chemist, not a lab tech. Which is, which is right. No, you're a lab tech, Donity said firmly. You've been out of the game for a while now. Surely you didn't think you could just waltz in here and get your old job back? Not after years of thumb twiddling? But here's the deal. Work hard and we'll see. Thumb twiddling? She was the one who was doing all the work. She has gotten far ahead than any of your useless chemists, if you would like to call them. And now you have the audacity to sit here and call, her, call whatever she did over these past few years thumb twiddling when you were the one who fired her. How, how dare you? 
लाइक यू नीड टू हैव सम शेम सम सम आइडिया दैट यू आर अ सैड एक्सक्यूज ऑफ अ ह्यूमन बींग एंड दैट्स वाई यू आर सेंग ऑल ऑफ दिस एंड यू थिंक यू आर द बॉस आई मीन ओके मे बी टेक्निकली यू आर बट यू आर जस्ट अ पथेटिक लिटिल जर्क हु गेट्स ऑफ ऑन बुलिंग पीपल बुलिंग हैरसिंग assaulting women and i hope you get what you deserve you just i it's been a while since i've gone on a rant like this because i've never felt have found a character who i hated despised from my gut but this isn't what we discuss relax luscious he's just he's just pissing her off even more and he's and as a result he's pissing me off even more so got to go bye hi again so i am about 212 pages into this book i have about 170 pages to go and i'm at the point where elizabeth zot is uh, starting her new stint as a cooking show expert which we know from the blurb it's not a spoiler or anything but uh, i'm at that point and the way she makes her Uh, arguments about what should be and what shouldn't be with convictions it just makes me so happy to see her to be reading her arguments and to see how she stands by them so much and see there is a point where walter pine who's the one who recruits her uh, to do the show he kind of goes into this whole two or three page explanation about what it is about afternoon the afternoon depression zone and why it is that her cooking show is supposed to rev people up why she why they are asking her to do whatever it is they are doing and at that point i don't didn't understand and i still don't whether he is saying it just because he wants her to do all of this to wear the tight fitting clothing to be provocative and all of that or if he truly believes whatever it is he's saying i guess we'll find out in the next how many pages but at that point i was like bro i don't believe you for one second but okay at the moment i'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt and let's move forward let's see what happens but i need to take a break right now because it's lunch time lunch time and uh, elizabeth zot becoming a cooking show expert who makes dinner like it's it's poetic i should have filmed this towards uh, dinner time maybe but uh, yeah we all do what we got to do kind of thing i don't even know what i'm talking anymore but the whole premise of the book the whole premise of uh, elizabeth and how she is getting by what she does Uh, as uh, that is so ground breaking in the way she approaches cooking as and looking at it as chemistry it's just the best one of the best okay i wouldn't say that so far at least this is a favorite but i am going to wait till the very end and see how the story turns out for uh, a couple of these side characters as we know and uh, of course i'm rooting for elizabeth but I think one or two of the other characters need to be taken down a couple of hundred notches because that's where they see themselves at at the moment. Hey hi, so I have been reading uh Lessons in Chemistry and I wanted to film this clip outside in the hall but the washer is going and it's making a ruckus over there so I thought okay I'll come back sit here and tell you what i think of this i'm not going to be holding this up because whatever reason but i have updates for you so i'm very very close to finishing lessons in chemistry i just finished chapter 32 and i'm i think uh, about 292 pages and i think this might be yet another 2024 favorite but it also completely depends on how the whole book turns out so we're going to reserve judgment till the very end let's see if the things that i really want to happen will happen or not i mean that's not a certainty that if this does not happen i won't like this book or something but that will be just that a little nudge in the right direction but in the 80 pages since my last update azot has settled down into her role as the host of sabaret 6 
but zot being zot it's never an easy conversation right because she has so many questions she asks so many questions and needs everything to be verifiable and true to fact and this is my favorite part about zot okay that she will stand her ground because she knows she's right even if her surroundings are a bit slow on the uptake and are trying to sabotage her with their ancient beliefs of what a woman should and shouldn't do and here's a little note that i wrote when i came to a particular part that was happening i won't mention what it is but yeah i wouldn't know what the society of the 1950s and 60s was like but i imagine this story mirrors it well only it talks only about white women or white society irrespective this was an age when women were considered to be helpers to the actual innovators that men apparently were which is a perspective unfortunately shared by so many people even today which is also how i know that the reflection is true and i must say that despite the heaviness of the story and its topics there is a kind of levity to it that is so endearing and there are so many parts so many points in the story where i burst out laughing because the characters are being so funny because of how clever they are or simply because how amazingly well how brilliantly the author has brought all these concepts together and then there's madeline or mad as she is known who is elizabeth's daughter and she is a precocious little child okay and she asks questions just like elizabeth does and she is like a mini version of her mother in that sense and it always always cracks me up when she drives harriet nuts with the types of questions that she asks it's just amazing it's fun to see it's fun to watch and i love it and then speaking of elizabeth the way she drives walter pine absolutely nuts she drives him mad it has to be the highlight of this book so the man is an afternoon programming producer or something and he never ever includes a word of what what he tells her to do and it it is satisfying to see and then it is also a little funny uh, to see to watch him hyperventilating because uh, she is do- now doing the exact same thing that he specifically told her not to do or vice versa and it's also a little impressive because walter pine acts as a kind of a buffer for her like he takes the rough hits for elizabeth zot and when elizabeth goes off on the what's wrong with these women why do they buy into these cultural stereotypes speech which is one that has been building up since the very beginning of the book and one that she has been fighting ever since all you can do is just nod vigorously and say exactly exactly elizabeth zot thank you in the end lessons in chemistry is about a woman who who is constantly fed up of social stereotypes and she does what she knows best be herself and in that process she changes lives both hers and that of others like imagine talking about chemistry and life and cooking and the connection between all three of these like i feel like it is such a fun way of looking at these things because this way you'll understand what each is and what each is bringing to the table and where each is coming from and i left off at the spot where she's made yet another controversial statement which i am loving by the way and i cannot wait to see what the reaction of the people of 1960 will be i mean i imagine they're going to blow their tops off at whatever she said but let's see Okay. So hi. Okay, let me remove this. Okay, so late last night I finished reading Lessons in Chemistry and I absolutely loved it. Like I don't know the kind of comments that I need to give right now. I'm not going to do a structured thing of it because of all of that. I'm not going to do a mini review of sorts, but uh, I'm going to tell you the thoughts that I had when I ended the book after I ended the book because that's the kind of mood I am in right now. So, Lessons in Chemistry starts in 1952 and it goes on uh, for the better part of the next decade and more and we follow elizabeth zot her 
everything that she goes through the sexism the misogyny that's rampant in those times in uh, educational circles in stem areas in offices everywhere what was expected of women and uh, how men saw it i mean this is something that is there even today but we have come quite a bit of a distance from there i'm not saying now is a, the best time in history to be a woman because we might have come a long way but we still do have a long way to go this takes me back to this video that i made about a book that i read recently it's called lives not lived and in that we we follow the lives of uh, indian women and uh, this is exactly the thing that i said there as well and lessons in chemistry is uh, another example when it compels me to say that we are not at the point where uh, things are like that right now but we do still have a long way to go i mean i had 80 pages before the book ended but I, uh, those 80 pages were so much i wouldn't say fun because they were a little on the heavier side there's so much going on elizabeth is uh, taking so much crap from so many people and the way it progressed to the end and the way some characters from throughout the book came up and it, it just concluded very well in my opinion i will say that on the whole this is a book that uh, sometimes it does feel like there's no place that is it is going to there it does not have a destination it feels like but th the whole point of this book is that you need to concentrate on its journey and when some people say that the journey is more important than the destination this book can be taken as one example and once you finish reading the book and even halfway through for that matter uh, you will know that for this book the journey and the destination that is the points that is making are very similar are either the same or are on parallel lines and it is such a well written book it is funny it is heavy it uh, brings up all the important points it has a strong female character she who doesn't take shit from anyone no matter what her situation is and i admire her so much for it given that she is not a representation of all the women in the world because she is a white woman in 1950s america but her acknowledgement of the fact of her privilege despite whatever is going on her acknowledgement of that and her talking about how a uh, discrimination based on uh, sex gender race and uh, all of this should not be made and she brings that up at a very opportune moment at a very important moment and for her to do that it sort of warmed me to her even more than before and the next time around when i think of uh, strong female characters elizabeth zott will definitely be on that list I really really enjoyed this book. I, I it was like a whole experience of sorts. It, it it doesn't attempt to be funny. It's not like consciously funny, but uh, there are so many places which are like so dry and so witty that I I I laughed out loud. Let me let me just share one with you. The biggest benefit in being the child of a scientist, low safety bar. As soon as Matt could walk, <laughs> Elizabeth encouraged her to touch taste toss bounce burn rip spill shake mix splatter sniff and lick nearly everything she encountered mad harry had shouted every morning as she let herself in put that down down mad agreed flinging a half filled coffee cup across the room and i'm like no not like that girl you okay so elizabeth is a kind of person who will influence you even if it's against your will so you will find yourself doing this kind of thing uh talking in a very temperance brennan coded language if you watched bones the tv show bones you will know that the main character temperance brennan is a very astute uh, very specific she depends on details and she has to have facts at hand and uh, she will refute anything that she thinks is wrong and elizabeth zott is very temperance brand coded in my opinion and she will affect you irrespective of whether you like it or not and when elizabeth has done one more thing that walter pine told us specifically not to and uh, one of the i think hair and makeup artist comes and asks him can i get you anything he's like yes cyanide like he's he's totally fed up elizabeth is on air and she's talking about uh, how 
I think she's making chicken pot pie. I think that is. I don't remember the name. I can't turn because I have one hand. One hand is holding the camera and one hand is holding the book. But okay, what was that? Walter gasped after whatever it is she has said. What did she say? Subsidized childcare. Rosa said as she sponged his forehead. We should get that on the ballot. She leaned down, taking in a vein pulsing on Walter's forehead. Listen, why don't I go get you some acetyl salicylic acid? It'll. What did you say? He hissed, batting her sponge away. Subsidized childcare? No, the other acetyl sal- salicylic acid. Aspirin? He demanded hoarsely. Here at KCTV, we call it aspirin. Bayer aspirin. Want to know why? Because Bayer is one of our sponsors. The people who pay our bills. Ring any bells? Say it. Aspirin. Like he is done with people talking about things in the way that they are not usually talked about, which is another uh, good example of how uh, Elizabeth Zott moves away from the normal. She is not bothered by society's definitions of normal, and people who think that women should be doing this or women shouldn't be doing this. she isn't bothered by them i mean there comes a point where willful bothering of her by the people will get her down a bit as it will any human but she is normally not bothered by it she will refute it she will talk against it she will bring it down and she talks about aspirin by taking its component names and it annoys the hell out of walter and he's got the hair and makeup lady also to talk about it like that and she's got the hair and makeup lady rosa to also talk about it like that and now walter is exasperated i mean walter's a good guy he knows how to handle elizabeth i mean he's at the end of his tether most of the time but he knows how to handle the situation he he is a sort of a brother figure to elizabeth that doesn't mean that he doesn't do a couple of conditioned behavior sometimes but yet i don't have a problem with walter he went on my shit list and off of it for a couple of times but but elizabeth zot man elizabeth zot what a character what a brilliant brilliant character to hold her own in a time as that it was it was something to see so those were my thoughts about lessons in chemistry by bonnie garmus thank you people for choosing this to be the subscriber pick i know this is coming a month too late so if you are wondering at the end of it all whether or not i would recommend lessons in chemistry i think this ought to tell you what what it is what i'd be doing of course i'd recommend lessons in chemistry read it it's wonderful and yeah just have some patience with it but because i know that the first few chapters are a little bit of a drag you need some m- motivation to go through all of them so keep at it and i promise it will get interesting for me personally it was interesting right from right off the bat but a friend of mine was saying that the first few chapters didn't hold her hold her attention so i told her to keep at it it will get better even if halfway through it's not working for you then dnf but if you ask me in my opinion i do think that for you it will get better at some point So yes that was a subscriber pick for the month of May which I finished in June and that book is Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Gamas highly 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 recommend and yeah I hope that you enjoy reading it if you decide to pick it up or when you decide to pick it up and yes uh, I'll see you in the next video until then 